Welcome to the first edition of the Cybersecurity Competition Federation Show. I'm Dan Manson. I teach computer information systems at Cal Poly Pomona and serve as principal investigator for a National Science Foundation grant to help form an umbrella organization over cybersecurity competitions. The Cybersecurity Competition Federation can support the development of skill at a large scale by bringing cybersecurity competitions under an umbrella organization which will help players of all ages and skill levels identify a point of entry into a continuum of cybersecurity competition experiences. With a focus on communication and promotion, the CCF maintains the autonomy of competition creators, supports their business models, and does not interfere with their sponsorship or funding sources. Each week, this show will cover the world of cybersecurity competitions, similar to a sports show. We believe cyber competitions are like a sport. In future shows, we will drill down into competitions and provide stories, scores, and statistics from these events. We believe those that participate in competitions are cyber athletes with the same training, passion, and coolness, plus a few additions. The opportunity for these athletes to go pro is much greater. And in our world today, we are falling behind our real competition. Let's get started. In today's show, we will look at the top 10 cybersecurity competition stories of 2014. Number 10, the first collegiate cybersecurity championship cup. The cybersecurity championship cup was created to help encourage participation in cybersecurity competitions wherever they may exist. It is designed to reward participation in multiple competitions, thus encouraging students to obtain as much experience as they can. The program is similar to the FedEx or Sprint Cups. Teams gain points for participation in placement in disparate cybersecurity competitions. Number nine. The U.S. Military Academy won the 2014 Cyber Defense Exercise, CDX, its seventh coveted trophy since the annual competition began in 2001. Students from the U.S. Service Academies, including the U.S. Air Force Academy, U.S. Coast Guard Academy, U.S. Military Academy, U.S. Naval Academy, and U.S. Merchant Marine Academy, pitted their cybersecurity skills, tenacity, and ingenuity against the National Security Agency's top information assurance professionals. NSA's Information Assurance Directorate, IAD, sponsors the annual event. Number eight, National Cyber League records record numbers of participants in schools. The 2014 National Cyber League fall season involved roughly 1,400 players, over 200 coaches from 145 colleges and universities in 36 states. With a preseason assessment, two regular season games for individuals, one postseason game for teams. In postseason, 86 teams from 63 colleges and universities, from three ge geographic conferences in four competitive brackets, all provided 24 by 7 access to 20 Security Plus labs and 19 ethical hacking labs, with players taking far more than 100,000 shots on goal, also known as flag attempts while tracking individual and team performance scores across nine different performance objectives. Number seven, the Beach City's Cadet Squadron from San Pedro, California, wins the first middle school Cyber Patriot Championship. 2014 was the first year for a middle school division in Cyber Patriot. Number six, Clearfield High School, Clearfield, Utah, Air Force Junior ROTC, wins the 2014 Cyber Patriot All-Service Division Championship. After missing the national finals completely last year and receiving third place a couple of years before that, winning first place was a surprise for the Clearfield High School Cyber Patriot team. It was quite a shocker, but a good one, said team coach Major Kit Workman, U.S. Air Force retired. The kids were a little more confident than me because we didn't do real well in the first competition. We solved the crime at the fastest rate, but didn't collect all the evidence, so that cost us points. Number, nine, number five, PICO CTF 
2014. Pico CTF is a computer security game targeted at middle and high school students. The game consists of a series of challenges centered around a unique storyline where participants must reverse engineer, break, hack, decrypt, or do whatever it takes to solve the challenge. The challenge are all set up with the intent of being hacked, making it an excellent legal way to get hands-on experience. Number four, Seesaw. For the sixth year in a row, Carnegie Mellon students dominated the scoreboard for Capture the Flag at the 11th annual New York Polytechnic School of Engineering Cybersecurity Awareness Week, Seesaw. The event drew hundreds of finalists from colleges and high schools across the country to compete in a number of security activities. The Capture the Flag competition drew 15 teams of undergraduates who bested contestants from 75 countries in preliminary rounds. Members of the Rensselaer team ruled in first and second place in the Homeland Security Quiz, a game show style contest in which participants were queried on network security, cryptography, malware, protocols, and programming, and other topics. Students in a high school forensics challenge solved a fictitious data breach in a retail store using digital evidence, including an Android mobile phone and their knowledge of rootkit detection and analysis and other techniques. A Poolsville High School team from Maryland took first place. Thomas Jefferson High School for Science and Technology in Virginia won second place. And Pocono Mountain East High School in Pennsylvania came in third. In that contest, finalists accrued prizes for their school's science programs, as well as $10,000 scholarships to the New York University School of Engineering. Top winners earned even larger scholarships. An embedded security challenge that tested the security and trustworthiness of hardware drew 10 student teams as finalists. The University of South Florida took first and third places, and the University of Central Florida won second place. A first-time security policy competition invited participants to develop and present research on the topic of how to protect interconnected electronic devices, including devices that don't yet exist, making up the Internet of Things. The computer science master's degree students from the University of Illinois at Urbana-Champaign won first place in that event, followed by undergrads from the United States Naval Academy in second and third places. An applied research challenge invited students who have published in a scientific journal or peer-reviewed conference to present their work to a panel of judges. First place went to a Columbia University student who wrote on the topic of ret to dur rethinking kernel isolation. A University of Texas at Dallas student won second place for his paper, From Patches to Honey Patches, Lightweight Attacker Misdirection, Deception, and Disinformation. Third place went to two students from the University of Illinois at Urbana-Champaign who researched the topic, The Pearl of Fragmentation, Security Hazards in Android Device Driver Customizations. Number three, Iowa State Ice Rink. First developed to support cyber defense competitions, Ice Rink is a virtual laboratory environment that allows students an opportunity to undertake hands-on activities focused on networking, cybersecurity, and penetration testing. It is built upon an internet testbed called IceAge that provides a real-world networking environment for students. To the students, it appears as if their network, with, which uses public address space, is directly connected to the internet. In reality, the student's traffic is contained in the controlled IceAge testbed. This presents misconfiguration or other beginning mistakes from disrupting a classroom or campus network. Currently, ISRIC is used by two major Midwestern universities, one Iowa Community College, and more than 100 Iowa high schools. The environment is flexible enough to support traditional classroom activities, such as labs, as well as hands-on activities for training sessions, short courses, and workshops. ISRIC is currently used in university courses on networking, introduction to security information warfare, and a master's level capstone course. It has been used in cybersecurity workshops for accountants as well as electrical power system employees. Number two, North Hollywood High School wins Cyber Patriot Open Division. The team of 11th graders beat out 620 other Open Division teams to clinch the national championship, 
marking the first win for the school and Los Angeles Unified School District. Number one, the University of Central Florida wins the National Collegiate Cyber Defense Competition. The team from University of Central Florida received a trip to the White House to meet with Vice President Biden, have their picture on the jumbo screens in Times Square. In addition, the University of Central Florida wins the first Collegiate Cybersecurity Competition Cup. 2015 is shaping up as the biggest year ever for cybersecurity competitions. Here are a few of this month's competitions. In the near future, we will list 2015 cybersecurity competitions and other activities on our website at cyberfed.org. If you have a competition you would like on the calendar, please email me at dmanson at cpp.edu. In January 2015, the upcoming competitions are Ghost in the Shell Code, January 16th to 18th at ghostintheshellcode.com. The Cyber Patriot High School Regional Category Round, January 16th to 18th, uscyberpatriot.org. Also, the Cyber Patriot Middle School Semifinals, January 16th to 18th, at uscyberpatriot.org. And the Western Regional Collegiate Cyber Defense Competition Virtual Qualifiers, the beginning of the CCDC season, January 31st at wrccdc.org. Each week, we will provide you with interviews with players, coaches, and supporters of cybersecurity competitions. We will close today with a few words from North Hollywood High School coach Jay Geringer. I sat down with Jay recently and wanted you to hear what he had to say about the opportunity that college students have to mentor high school and middle school students in cyber competitions and the need in high schools today for cybersecurity competitions. To me, looking at it in, in 2020 hindsight, the biggest values about a college education are not the actual classwork, it's all the experiences that are around that classwork, whether it's competing in the college level cyber competition, CCDC, or if you're majoring in chemistry, working in a professor's lab, or working on the school newspaper. There, there are just a tremendous number of outside, out of the classroom uh, activities that you can do in college. Well, with, whenever you're helping teach somebody something, you're growing as a person and you're growing in knowledge of your subject area too. So this is giving these guys that are college students experience doing this. Uh, any college or university in the country has students in it that are studying things that are of value to cyber patriot. A secondary education in America, in my mind, has gotten very much about individual achievement and achievement in areas that frankly aren't very real world to me. I mean, how many multiple choice tests do we take as adults in our lives? Uh, the kids learn how to work together as a team. And that's really hard for peers to go and be working together collaboratively without somebody in charge telling them what to do. And since basically these kids are all peers, they're, each team kind of has maybe an informal leader, maybe somebody that's a tad more knowledgeable, but mostly they just work as a team together. And this is uh, something they just don't experience in a secondary education today, but is precisely what the world of work is. Because very few people work as individuals. You work as part of a team somehow, and people you have to get along with. And if you can't get along with the people and work with them and just kind of divide up the tasks as things come, you don't do very well, and you're not very successful. So this brings in a whole new set of learning that isn't really found much in the classroom. If you have questions, comments, and suggestions for our show and the Federation, please email me at dmanson at cpp.edu. We will be back next week with another edition 
of the Cybersecurity Competition Federation.